Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how I made these red oak bookshelves, including all the mistakes I made along the way. So my parents asked me to make some bookshelves for their office here. The bookshelves would go on the outside walls and they already have a table that goes underneath the window. The only special considerations are that they want the bookshelves to as closely match the desk here as possible, and they also want some kind of a cutout in the back so they can still use the electrical outlets. So I used SketchUp to design the bookshelf, and this is the final result. This does not show the cutout in the back, but everything else is pretty much the same. Aside from modeling everything to scale, SketchUp allowed me to also develop a cut list on the sheets of plywood I'd be using to build the bookshelves. This allowed me to plan how I make all the cuts to be most cost effective. Since all my tools are down in the basement, I can't get a full 4x8 sheet of plywood downstairs for cutting. So I took the insulation board upstairs to cut all the plywood down outside. The quarter inch plywood that I used for the backing of both bookshelves was starting to cup, so I added some weights to hold it flat and then cut through both sheets at the same time. With everything broken down into smaller form, I carried it all to the basement and used the rip cut guide to cut the shelves to their final dimension. The rip cut guide is a little bit difficult to work with because it doesn't slide very easily, but once you have it set in place it allows you to make repeatable cuts over and over, which is perfect for what I needed it for. Some of the other parts I broke down to final dimension using the miter saw and the table saw. At this point, I double checked to make sure all the parts were cut to proper dimension. And then because I had a little bit of tear out on the parts, I used a sanding block to knock down the splinters. And then I added pocket hole screws to all the shelves. The backing of the bookshelves will be quarter inch plywood, but I don't want to just nail it to the back side of the supports because then the sides of the plywood will be exposed. So I used a quarter inch dado stack set at a quarter inch depth and used it to cut a rabbit along the back side of the supports. This would allow that quarter inch sheet of plywood to nestle down inside and remain hidden from the sides of the bookshelves. I didn't want to have to tell my parents that they could come over to my basement anytime they want to use their new bookshelves. So I took all the parts upstairs and assembled them on the main level. Mm -hmm. 
just to make things a little bit easier on myself, I took the measurements from the SketchUp model and used them to mark a line for the top and bottom of each shelf. Despite some minor difficulties, both bookshelves were straightforward to assemble with pocket hole screws and wood glue. The next step was to make the face frame, which will add support to the shelves and cover up the ugly edge of the plywood. But first there was a little problem I needed to correct. Some of the shelves were not flush with the front face of the side supports, so when I go to attach the face frame, there will be some gaps along the edges, and I'd like to do the best I can to eliminate those. I moved the shelving out to the solarium and used 80 grit sandpaper to get them as smooth as I could, and then moved them back inside the house. I'm assembling the face frame from a combination of red oak 1x2s and 1x3s. The 1x3s will be used for the vertical styles on either side and the top and bottom rails. All the shelves in the middle will have rails comprised of 1x2s. I clamped the styles in place, leaving a little bit of an overhang on the outside that I could trim off later with a router. This would just ensure a smooth finish on that outer face. After cutting all the rails to length, and adding pocket holes to either end, I could start assembling the face frame. I would say that doing it this way worked okay. I was able to unclamp the styles on the bottom in order to get behind them and access the pocket hole screws. But having everything standing up did cause the glue to kind of run all over the place. Once the face frame was assembled, I added glue to the edge of the shelving and clamped the face frame to it. I then proceeded to completely lose my mind and attach the face frame with brad nails, forgetting that each of the shelves had pocket hole screws for this. I guess I just have to come back and fill the nail holes later. The second face frame went together just like the first, but then I laid the shelving down to attach it and avoid the glue mess. To ensure the backing fit perfectly, I clamped them in place and then used a pencil to trace along the inside edge. I then used the straight guide to cut along this line. I think things were looking pretty good at this point and sanding would remove these imperfections later. Back out on the solarium, I used a flush trim bit to even up those outer edges on the face frame with the sides of the bookshelf. I also used it on the top surface of each shelf to make sure that the face frame wasn't sitting up too high to leave a lip. To fix the nail holes I put in accidentally on purpose, I used some sawdust from my sander and added some wood glue to make a wood filler and then just filled in each of the holes.
Next I sanded to 120, 150, and 180 grits to get everything nice and smooth and ready for staining. Making sure to take light passes on the shelves so as not to sand through the veneer. I'm using a hickory wood stain by General Finishes. This is a water-based stain, and this was a mistake. I should have used an oil-based stain, but I didn't know that at the time. I later learned that water-based stain dries much more quickly than oil-based stain, which means it tends to leave lap lines on larger surfaces. This would turn out to be a fairly significant problem throughout this project. You can kind of see the lap line in the middle of this other backer piece here. I even went as far as to use a pre-stained wood conditioner on the shelving just to make sure that what I was seeing wasn't just blotchiness. But from what I know, red oak takes stain well anyway, and I ended up not seeing a difference with the conditioner. Aside from the water-based stain just drying too quickly, another problem I encountered was just the awkwardness of trying to stain a project that's already been assembled. If I had to do it again, I would try to stain the bookshelves in individual parts. Every little drip or gob of stain has to be quickly mopped up because if it's allowed to dry, it'll leave a noticeable spot. I used a water-based polyurethane, also by General Finishes, to protect the bookshelves. I felt like this gave everything a nice shine and even distracted from some of the stain imperfections. I attached the backing with brad nails. The baseboard where the bookshelves will be installed is half an inch thick, so I cut down some wood strips to half an inch and attach them around where the opening will go with CA glue and accelerant. I also attached a piece higher up for better stability. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know I have a superpower which I invoked here. With the back pieces on, I used a hole saw to punch through the backing. And then switched to a router with a pattern bit to cut through the rest of the shape. The pattern bit has a top mounted bearing that traces along the wooden pieces and cuts out the exact same shape. The bookshelves are now finished and ready for installation. But real quick, I put a ton of effort restoring the solarium here in a previous video, and I ended up damaging the floor making these bookshelves. I put more effort into that video than any other I've ever done, and it hasn't gotten nearly the amount of love it should. So do me a favor and go check that one out. I think you'll like it. My brother came over with his truck, and we loaded up the bookshelves and took them over to my parents' house. My parents were excited to get the bookshelves, and Nico was excited to be on camera. And with that, here's the final reveal. Overall, I'm really pleased with how the bookshelves turned out, and I think my parents are too. Thanks for joining me as I tried something new. I would encourage you to do the same, and keep on renovating your mind.